Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be walking through 10 simple Python exercises involving conditional statements for beginners. So let's get right into it. That's right. Before I begin talking about these individual exercises, I suggest that you pause the video at specific locations before each individual exercise that you're interested in learning and encourage you to try to solve the problem yourself. If you need help or are stuck, the video will show you how you can solve each specific scenario. So let's get started. My first exercise is to write a, write a program that asks the user to enter an integer. The program should display positive if the number is greater than zero and negative if the number is less than zero, and zero if the number equals to zero. Then the program should display even if the number is even and odd if the number is odd. So here's the code for it. The user input is asked, casted as integer value and stored in the number variable. And there is if elif statement here. First, it checks whether the number is more than zero. If it is true, then it prints out positive. If it is less than zero, it prints out negative. If it equals to zero, then it prints out zero. There is another set of if else statement here. When the number is divided by zero and there is a positive result other than zero, then it means the, the number is odd. Otherwise, the number is even. So let's try to run this and see. Integer, let's say eight. And it shows me it's a positive number and an even number. Let's try again with 99. Again, it's a positive and odd number. One more try. I enter zero and it correctly shows zero and even number. Let's try with a negative number before we move on. So negative 34 and it shows negative and even number. So that's the program. We have two different set of if, elif and if else statement here because we had two different conditions to check for. First we check for positive, negative or zero and then we check for whether the number is even or odd. Let's move on to exercise two. In this one, we need to write a program that asks the user for the length and width of the two rectangles. The program should tell whether the first rectangle is greater than or the second rectangle is greater than the first one. Or if the areas are same, it will display that the two rectangles have same area. So here's the code. The, the first four lines are just prompting the user to enter length and width of two rectangles. It calculates area one and area two for each of those rectangles. Uh, now, if elif and else condition here, it checks whether um, first area is more than second area or if second area is more than first area, it will give us different result or print out. And if they both are equal, then we will say both have the same area. So let's run this. Uh, let's run with simple example here. Length of first rectangle, let's say three. Enter. Width of the first rectangle, let's say four. So this is a three by four rectangle the area should be 12. Um, second rectangle length I will enter 4 and the width is 3. So this will also give the area of 12. Therefore both rectangles have the same area in this case. Let's run it again. 7.8 and then 8.3 for the second rectangle let's say 34 by 2. And now the second rectangle has a greater area. So let's move on to the third one. Here, problem is to write a program that asks the user for a month as a number between 1 and 12. The program should display a message indicating whether the month is in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, or the last quarter. So here's the code. Again, we first ask the user for the, uh, the month. We cast that as an integer because by default input will be a string when stored. And we check that month variable against number 1 and 12. If it is outside that range, we print error. Otherwise, we go through different nested if statement here. If the month is less than four, we print it's a first quarter. Otherwise, if less than seven, we print second quarter. If the month is less than 10, it would be third quarter. And if nothing above fits, then it should be the fourth quarter. Let's give it a shot. First, we enter zero to get an error. Again, more than 12. So let's say 34 as a month, which is invalid. So it will give us error again. Now we enter valid number, let's say 12. That should be fourth quarter. Run it again, four, and it's the second quarter of the year. So let's move on to the fourth exercise. 
Here we write a program that prompts the user to enter a number within the range of 1 to 10, and the program should display the Roman numeral version of that number. If the number is outside the range of 1 to 10, like in the previous example, the program should display an error. So here's my code. Notice interestingly that I'm storing the value and the Roman numeral in a set of key value pair inside a dictionary. Now once we store those um, key value pairs, we ask the user for input, enter a number within the range of 1 to 10. If that number is not in keys that is in the dictionaries 1 through 10, then we'll print out error. Otherwise we will go ahead and check the corresponding Roman numeral value for that number and print out that. So let's run this. Uh, let's get some error cases first. So if you enter 0, it will give us error. Again, if we enter 11 or more, it will also give us error. Now if we enter 2, it will check that the value 2 exists in this and therefore print out the value here, which is double i. Fairly simple. Exercise number 5. In the program, we should ask the user to enter the object's mass and calculate its weight. If the weight is more than 500 newtons, we need to display the message indicating it's too heavy. If it is under 100 newtons, display a message indicating it's too light. All right, so here's my code here. Open this prompt, user enters the object's mass, which is stored as a floating point number and mass variable. And then we calculate weight, which is mass times 9.8. If elif and uh, else statement here, for example, if it is more than 500, it, it prints out object is too heavy. If it is less than 100, it prints out object is too light. Otherwise, it will print out the weight of the object is the weight that we calculated here. And with this round function, I'm routing the, the variable or the value of the weight in two decimal point. So let's run this. Like the comment says here, I'm going to test with 10.21 and see what I get. The weight of the object is 100.06, which is rounded to two decimal point. Now, if I if I enter anything less than that, 10.20, let's say, the object is too light, which falls into this category here. Let's run it again. 51.02. The weight of the object is exactly 500 newtons. Anything more than that, 51.03, let's say, the object is too heavy, which now falls in this category. Let's move on. Exercise number six, magic date. The date June 10, 1960 is special because when it is written in the format 6 slash 10 slash 60, the month times the day is equal to the year 60. So in this program, we need to design our code so that uh, it asks the user to enter month, day, and two digits year in numerical form. And then the program should uh, determine whether the month times the day equal the year value, like in the previous example here. If that is true, then it should display a message saying the date is magic. Otherwise, it should display the message saying the date is not magic. Okay. Like in the requirement above, the program will first ask three inputs from user, each of them as casted as integer value. The first one will be month, second one will be day, and then the third input will be two digit year. Inside our if statement, it is calculating month times day, and if that value is equal to the year that is input by the user. It will print the date is magic, otherwise it will print the date is not magic. Let's give it a shot. Enter month. So let's go with this example and see how we get the result here. So first is six, and then day as 10, and the year, two digit year is 60. The date is magic. Let's run it again. We enter five, and then 10, but instead of 50, we get 51. Therefore, the date is not magic. Exercise 7, a class has two tests worth 25 points each, along with main exam worth 50 points. For a student to pass the class, they must obtain an overall score of at least 50 points and also obtain at least 25 points in the main exam. If the student's total score is less than 50 or they obtain less than 25 in the main exam, they receive a grade of fail. Otherwise, the grade is as follows. If they get more than total of 80, they get a grade of distinction. If they get less than 80, but more than 60, they get a credit grade. Uh, if they get less than 60, they get a pass grade, which is the same as this. So less than 50 would be failing. So write a program that prompts the user to enter their points for both test and exam and converts the value to integers. The program should first check if the points entered for the test and exam are valid. So we need input validation here. If any of the test scores are not between 0 and 25, 
or the exam score is not between 0 and 50, the program should display an error message. Otherwise, the program should display the total points and the grade. Okay, it's a little bit complicated than what we have done so far. So let's say the grade at the beginning is none. We initialize grade as none. Then there are three inputs. The first will be uh, the points for test one, and then the points for test two, and finally the points for the exam. And each of those are casted as integer value before they are stored in their respective variables. Now the main body of this is this if else statement here. If test one not in the range of 0 to 25, or test two not in the range of 0 to 25, or main exam not in the range of 0 to 50, then we'll say invalid input. Otherwise, we will calculate the overall with the addition of all these uh, three inputs that the user entered. If that overall is less than 50, or main exam is less than 25, the student fails. So we get a grade of F. So we are basically here updating the grade variable, G, small g. Instead of none, now we have a grade. If that condition is not satisfied, we will go through all these inner if statement conditions. Now, if the student is not failed, but the overall is less than 60, they are just passing. So the grade is just a pass grade. Otherwise, if, if the overall is less than 80, they get a grade of credit, else they get a grade of distinction. And now at the end, I have a print statement here, and it prints the total score is overall that is calculated here, and the grade is the grade value that was assigned here in any of these statements. Let's run this. So let's say I get 0, 0, and 0, and obviously that would be a total score of 0 and a grade of F. Um, let's try to give another invalid input, right? Anything be below zero. So let's say negative one and then zero, two, and let's say 56, invalid input because of this score here. All right, let's try a few more. Um, let's say somebody gets 25, 25, and 50, full score on each of these tests. The total score is 100, greatest distinction. All right, let's say nobody's that smart and that individual got 20, 20, 39. So he is just below the grade of distinction, total score is 79, and the grade is credit. All we are doing is nested if statement, if else, if else, and if elif else. So there's like three layers of if conditional statements involved in this. A few more examples, number eight now. Assume that hot dogs come in packages of 10 and hot dog buns come in packages of eight. Write a program that calculates the number of packages of hot dogs and the number of packages of hot dog buns needed for a cookout with the minimum number of leftovers. The program should ask the user for the number of people attending the cookout and the number of hot dogs each person will be given. Then the program should display minimum number of packages of hot dogs required, minimum number of packages of hot dogs buns required, and the leftover hot dogs and the buns. So here's our code. I'll explain a little later why we have to import math here. There's a way we can do without importing math, but it's easier. As a program asks, the first thing we are doing is asking for user input, number of people attending the cookout, and then how many of hot dogs each person will get. All right, once we have that, we calculate total hot dogs required, which is equal to the number of people times the hot dog for each people. Because we imported math, we now have this built-in function inside the math module called ceiling. So what it does is the ceiling will round that number up instead of rounding down. So let's say if we get 10.1 hot dog packages are required, then it says, well, we cannot get 10.1, so you need to get 11 hot dog packages. That's what the ceiling does. And that's exactly why we had to import math here to make our life easier. We do the similar calculation for packages of hot bun required. Instead of dividing by 10, we need we do divide by 8 because hot dog buns come in packages of 8 and hot dogs come in packages of 10. So that's why the division is by different numbers here. We do math.ceiling of that number and store that in packages of buns required. And then simply we are printing out the statements here, number of hot dogs and number of packages of hot dogs buns required. Now for leftover, all we do is packages of hot dogs required times 10 minus the total hot dog required, right? So each, so we have the packages required and each package has 10. So these are the total hot dogs that we purchased, let's say, and then the total hot dogs required. So purchased minus required is whatever is the leftover. So I hope you get the idea of the calculation here. 
and we do similar calculation total bonds purchased is packages of bonds required times eight and then the total use are total hot dogs required and so if we calculate total purchase minus total used we will get the leftover bonds and at the end we simply print out so let's run this number of people attending cookout let's say 80 people let's say each will get one hot dog so in this case minimum hot dog package of uh, required will be eight and with similar calculation minimum number of packages of hot dog bonds required is 10 and then zero hot dog left over zero hot dog bonds left over All right let's give it one more shot and in this case let's say any random number 56 number of hot dogs each person will be given let's say in this case there will be two hot dogs for each person so we will need 112 hot dog which is 12 packages and 14 hot dog bonds package required there will be eight hot dogs left over but no bonds left over um, before i move on i want to remind you all these codes will be in in the description below or uh, you can just click on the link that i provide in the description below it will be either a google collab link or a github link or both so you can go there and look at the code anytime you want exercise nine we we'll talk about a roulette wheel here which has pockets and each pocket are numbered from zero to 36 and there's color set for pockets the color pockets are as follows pocket number zero is green for pocket one through ten odd number pockets are red and even number pockets are black for pockets 11 through 18 odd numbers are black and even numbers are red for pockets 19 through 28 odd numbers are red and even numbers are black for pockets 29 through 36 odd numbers are black and even numbers are red now we need to write a program that asks the user to enter the pocket number and display what the pocket is green red or black the program should display an error if the user enters number that is outside the range of 0 through 36. So the code looks like this. We begin with the user input of the pocket number. And if that pocket number is not in range of 0 to 36, we will print an error message. Otherwise, we will do all these nested if else conditional statements. If pocket number is 0, then the number is green. That is based on the first condition here. Else if pocket number is less than 10, now we are into this condition but now also we need to check uh, odd numbers or even numbers and print out red or black accordingly if pocket number divided by two gives us some value other than zero then that means it's odd number and then print out it would be a red otherwise we will print out it's a black number and for each of these different conditions we do different if else block inside elif block progressively let's run this and see let's first check the error conditions so let's say 37 uh, it currently shows enter pocket number is outside the range of 0 to 36 run it again enter 0 pocket is green enter again let's say 19 that would be a condition here pocket 19 to 18 odd number pocket are red and that is what we get okay so let's move on to the last exercise number 10 here we create a change counting game that gets the user to enter the number of coins required to make exactly one dollar the program should prompt the user to enter number of pennies nickels dimes and quarters if the total value of coin entered is equal to one dollar the program should congratulate the user for winning the game otherwise the program should display a message indicating whether the amount entered was more than or less than one dollar so this seems fairly straightforward we need four inputs from the user each for pennies nickels dimes and quarters that they have we add them together and store that as a total variable so if that total is exactly equal to 100 we will congratulate the winner otherwise if the total is less than 100 we will print out the total entered was less than one dollar if neither of those condition is valid then we'll print out the entered amount was more than one dollar let's see so let's say i have 100 pennies and then none of the dimes nickels and quarters so that's exactly one dollar and it congratulates me let's run another scenario I have 25 pennies two nickels four dimes zero quarters and that's less than one dollar let's run it again similar scenario 25 pennies two four and one quarter that is exactly one dollar and if I have 100 pennies two nickels no dimes and no quarters that is more than one dollar okay so that's the that's the program and I think that's all for this video I hope you learned something new with this video um, please don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit the comment on whatever additional videos or contents you want to see until next time thank you